Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day. First, I want to congratulate Baldur's Gate 3 for winning another Game of the Year award. It definitely just cleaned house this year. And congratulations to Neil Druckmann for winning the Andrew Lawn Legend Award, all at the New York Game Awards. I'm a critic member, so I want to disclose that. He also signed my copy of The Last of Us 1 on the PlayStation 3. Very grateful for that. And he was a very nice guy. Like, I talked to him about The Last of Us, and he opens up to criticism and positivity about his products. He loves to hear feedback, and I can't wait what he, uh, what project they have cooking at Naughty Dog. He wouldn't spill on anything, which, of course, he wouldn't. He's one of the big executives at Naughty Dog, but regardless, yeah, very, very nice person. I enjoyed talking to him, and I can't wait to see what he has in the oven for future projects. I mean, of course, it's season two of The Last of Us. I can't wait for that, and then, um, yeah, maybe we'll get another new IP, maybe Revival of Jack and Daxter, I really want that. But let's get into the story with Power World. So Power World is one of the biggest games to come out in probably the last decade. It sold over 7 million copies in 5 days. Like most AAA publishers would salivate at the numbers that this game is making. And this is only Steam sales. Like Xbox sales are right now unknown. But it's on Game Pass. And you can guarantee there are probably people who bought it on Game Pass in order to secure the copy. Because this is early access still. But still a lot of people are having fun with it. It's basically a mix of Ark Survival from what I can tell. And Pokemon, which is, you know, always a good thing. A lot of people love Pokemon, but Pokemon has been stagnant in recent times, especially with Scarlet and Violet launching in the way that they did. A lot of people chalk that up for a Game Freak just being overworked, but I would also say that they simply just couldn't keep up with all the Pokemon that are in the game and trying to just combine it all into this whole experience. Then again, I heard positive things about Pro um, Arceus Legend, I believe it's called. I can't remember. Like, I stopped playing Pokemon games after Sun and Moon because, you know, I would just stick to the original team that I had, which is, by the way, Vaporeon, Blastoise, Raichu, um, Sylveon. I would always find a way to get Mew, but if I can't get Mew, it would be Zapdos. And my sixth, I would always keep as a random. Usually I tried to include a Pokemon that's new to the franchise. But regardless, Pokemon definitely left a void behind that Power World really filled. Now, it's not been all positive when it comes to Power World, of course. When there's a big game like this, there's always going to be negativity around it. And Yang Yue did a really good video about it, about the accusations of plagiarism and using AI art. Now, Valve has loosened the grip when it comes to AI assets, but you have to disclose that in order to sell their game on their platform so you can't just put it on their platform you have to say this has AI generated art and there have been uh, arguments about whether they used it or not but at the moment there is no uh, confirmation that they did do this the other thing is that the problem is the Pokemon models seem to line up with the PAL models which are the creatures in the world too perfectly now I've talked to game developers over the course of the years and this is very suspicious because you would never line up two models together and get almost the exact same thing, especially when it comes to the avatar. So that is a little more suspicious. There's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from other works of art. In fact, when I studied art back in college for a core class, which is required by school, uh, CUNY schools, my teacher told me how it's almost impossible to create anything totally original because everyone takes inspiration from other things. We have thousands of years worth of human art and other things to take inspiration from. So essentially, you can call back almost any piece of art to another piece of art. So it's impossible to create something original in that case. But regardless, this is not exactly the best look when it comes to Power World. This is not to say that everything has not been on the Nintendo's radar. For example, there was a mod that came out for poke making everything officially Pokemon, turning characters into Ash Ketchum, Pikachu, you name it, and Nintendo has DMCA that, which is within their right, but it is a mod, but at the same time, there is a lot of gray area that comes with that. Nintendo is notorious for doing this if they feel like it steps on their intellectual property, and in this case, I can see, yeah, someone looking at this and being like, is this a new Pokemon game? Like the average user, like most average people who just buy games because they look cool, they look interesting, or their favorite content creator said it's a good game, might mistake this. That's the biggest thing when it comes to this stuff. Like if they can mistake this for a Pokemon game, which obviously if you saw Ash Ketchum and Pikachu, you probably would. 
that's going to be a problem. But you can also make the argument that it's a mod and it's freely available, which is also problematic. Problematic. I'm not a lawyer in any way, but I'm just looking at this as the average consumer. So maybe that's why they did that stuff. You never know. Either way, Nintendo does bring down the sledgehammer. Now, one of the bigger controversies, again, with all this stuff that's coming around is whether it's ethical to buy this game. I know, but Twitter is a place where they question the ethics for every little product that you buy despite everything is made by some sort of insidious company that probably exploits people in some way. It's hard to find anything that doesn't have exploitative elements to it, but Twitter will basically grandstand on anything. And two of my favorite content creators kind of chimed in on this. First off is Asmongold. The success of Powell that only things customers actually care about is a good game. AI, slavery, bestiality, copyright infringement. It's a video game. There are pretend problems that people don't actually care about. Make a good game. People buy games. Simple. And honestly, he's not wrong about that. And I'll get more into that. And another great creator that I really respect and love to watch is Josh Drive Hayes. On the Powell world, copyright issues, a... I don't know what that means. Uh, AI, I guess. It is a vital remember that vast majority of gamers simply do not care about the behind the scenes issues of games. They are not on Reddit, they are not on Discord groups, they are not reading forums, they are not even reading tweets. So when games do things which make gamers mad, remember while the passionate discussion may look like the majority of the online discourse even dominating the gaming news, it's still a tiny tiny fraction of the overall player base of any game. The same way people boycotted the Harry Potter game and it went on to sell millions at top charts, the same way no one admits to buying FIFA, yet the Ultimate Team makes more money than any other game. So when game news, especially negative news, comes out and you wonder why the game is still selling well or being enjoyed despite all the stuff you think people should know or care about, it's unfortunate, but the fact is most people simply do not care. If the gameplay is fun, people will buy it and play it, then finish playing it and move on. The majority won't give a single thought to the politics, ethic, morals, or immortal design choices of the dev's personal history in the land of popular gaming. Gameplay alone is king. And he's absolutely right. Hogwarts Legacy had a huge amount of controversy around it because of J.K. Rowling's past statements, despite the fact a lot of these people couldn't even give evidence of what they were accusing her of. And... She wasn't even involved in Hogwarts Legacy's development, and it went on to sell 22 million copies. Why? Because people saw a Harry Potter game, they love Harry Potter, and it was a good game, and it went on to sell that many copies. And same thing for FIFA, like, everyone talks about the horrible politics when it comes to FIFA and Madden games. The monetization practices are unethical on so many levels, yet those players will happily spend money on a pay to win game and $60 now $70 on these sports titles every year despite the fact that there are tons of videos showcasing that these games use heavily recycled assets don't give a damn about the animations or the gameplay whatsoever and put in these microtransactions to give a pay to win advantage despite these players knowing that it's happening and they'll spend thousands of dollars on them Let's face it, sports gamers are basically the mud when it comes to gaming because they're treated like mud. And they tried to do that with Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA and look how that happened. <laughs> they simply, gamers bullied the hell out of them. They're like, nope, nope, keep that with the sports gamers. We don't want that here. So uh, look, say what you will, but it's the truth. I'm sorry if you enjoy Madden or FIFA or these sports games, you have to know the hard truth. The publisher treats you like garbage. It's the reality, but they spend millions of dollars on these microtransactions and it works. And the same thing that happened with Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard had a horrible um, sexual harassment lawsuit that they settled recently. But yeah, in July 2021, the company had a frat boy culture where female employees experienced sexual harassment, discrimination, and retaliation. The lawsuit alleges that male employees would pass off responsibility to their female co-workers, pass off women of color for opportunities given to less tenured workers, have an office nicknamed the Cosby Suite because senior World of Warcraft developers harassment of women. And this was a huge thing. They even changed like names of characters that were representations of veteran Blizzard employees like Cole Cassidy was once called uh, McCree and they made it 
unanimous rule that they can no longer name characters after developers after all of this transpired. Regardless, it was a huge thing, and guess what happened? Diablo Immortal, which was one of the most infamous games to come out from Blizzard Entertainment, came out with the meme that don't you guys have phones? You all got you guys all have forums, uh, phones. It still went on to make over half a billion dollars. It's charted as one of the worst examples of monetizations you can possibly imagine. Even worse than Madden and FIFA in a lot of ways. It's still sold millions of and it's still made millions. I say sold, but it's a free-to-play game, but you get what I'm saying. It made millions of dollars, half a billion dollars. That's more than I think Diablo 4 will ever make, but regardless, yeah. And in Call of Duty's case, it's still made over a billion dollars on the mobile market, and yeah, no one cared. No one cared that all these women were being treated like garbage because they just wanted to play their video games. Like, I felt bad for all the women who had to endure this. Even the male employees who defended these girls who were enduring such horrible treatment from these people. Like, uh, how Bobby Kotick uh, told an employee to go end themselves. I believe it was his uh, secretary. Regardless, this guy's a demon. No one cares. Now that he's gone, it doesn't matter. This stuff is not going to change because... Look at all this money that they are making. They don't need to do anything. They can do whatever they want and still make a profit. So in a lot of ways, so Zach and Josh Drive Hayes are absolutely right. Now I want to play this clip from Far Cry 6 and I think it sums up the entire situation very well. Granted, this is a little more harsh, but it does showcase how the average consumer does think of this stuff. Miss Tilly, I'm afraid I only have a few minutes. Let's get right to it. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time with your father. He is a great teacher. And your mother? ¿Qué clase de tontería es esta, María? Es el estilo americano. Let's talk Viviro, a cancer treatment that extends the lives of millions around the world, except in the United States. My own father is stage four. Why do you make Americans wait? It's very American to expect what does not belong to you. You refuse diplomatic overtures, even promises to lift the blockade. I am sorry about your father, but Americans will wait, just like everyone else. Yesterday, your network, Yarovision, was hijacked by rebels. They called for the liberation of so-called outcasts from Viviro labor camps. Is Viviro produced with slave labor? Truth or lies? The truth, of course. Yara did not write the playbook. Slavery was your first corporation. 1800 to 1860. Cotton was your number one export. Grown by whom? Just a second. Slaves. Four million Americans worth 3.5 billion dollars. The number one asset in your economy was people who look like me. What is that called? A history lesson? A head start. Replaced by a billion dollar prison industry that pays its inmates pennies. America is not alone. Correct. Children so are close. Sweatshops build our phones, and Viviro saves millions of lives. Do you think that those lives care where it comes from? Santos Espinoza executed your father in the 1967 Communist Revolution. You were imprisoned at the age of 13, the same age as Diego. You were self-educated? My mother was a wonderful teacher. I understand you were forced to endure 15 years of hard labor. Pruning tobacco. I hear you still have the blade. When Yara becomes paradise, when I give my Viviro to America, my methods, your questions, no one will care. We're done here? For your father. So, yeah, that actually is how this entire situation is. Look, there's no, like I stated, there's no confirmation that Power World used AI assets or that they stole character models from Pokemon. But the reality is that no one cares. Like, the average consumer is not going to uh, care. Look what's happening with Dark and Darker. No one cares. They just want the game. They just want to play the game because it's fun. 
And in this case, yeah, despite this reporter basically confirming that Anton uses slave labor in order to produce this cancer miracle drug, guess what the reporter does? She still takes the drug because her father has stage 4 cancer and she needs it to save his life. Despite all her questions, despite everything she demonized Anton rightfully so for, she, she still took the drug from Diego. It doesn't matter. And that's the same case here. So yeah, tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you, Are you playing Power World? I actually haven't played it yet because The uh, Last of Us 2 Remastered came out. Then there's Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Persona 3 Reloaded. Then there's Suicide Squad. Oh my god, like... Ah, one of my uh, co-workers was like, you, you need to take a break, but I have to keep going. Regardless, tell me what do you think about this entire situation. Is there something I haven't seen? I like to hear everyone's opinions about everything. And that's it from me. Like, sub if you want to go the extra mile. Dislike it if you hate the video. I am monetized, so there is a join and super thanks button. It helps me a great deal. So, yeah, that's it from me. Have a good one.